Hello, my friends. How are you? I am doing very well. Although today, I um, oh, I was really mourning lost friendships. I was mourning my mother, a fundamentalist Christian who's closed off from her children and rejected her family because they don't share her politics or her obsession with the end of the world and the rapture. <laughs> that right there is enough to depress you. Also, just some real internal suffering, letting go of past relationships, letting go of the things, you know, letting them go in my heart and and knowing the time for some had passed completely and uh and just remembering the good times too remembering and and mourning i've uh my uncle is a sound engineer and he's been helping me to improve my sound as i kind of get ready to uh to create a new podcast i'm kind of clearing my clearing my pipes <laughs> kind of revving up oh. working on my choppy ADHD style my sweet my weird idiosyncratic rantings and ravings that's not going to change after many years of secretly conversing in my heart now I want to put my voice on the wind <laughs> It's a time where I think all who can do something and say something should. We have to remember ourselves. Um, I'm going to read uh, first here just a, a letter I wrote to a friend uh, recently and uh, a poem that I really enjoyed or just thought was very beautiful, very deep, <laughs> very beautiful poem. And, um, and yeah, I, I hope that you know, you're doing well and you're being compassionate with yourself and you're forgiving yourself and loving yourself. I mean, it's the best thing you can do to help right now. All right. Well, with that, thanks for stopping by and I hope you enjoy the rest of the chat. There is still yet magic in the world and the greatest beauty. Though the clouds have darkened and the waters surged, we are that magic. Though many slumber and it seems have lost theirs, they haven't. Everyone alive has a chance as long as they are alive. Though their ears and eyes and hearts are now hermetically sealed shut and it seems a foregone conclusion that our enemies have won, I assure you, at least as long as I have breath, they have not. The trap is sprung. The rabbits are escaping. We shall not go gentle into that good night. A poem by David White. That day I saw beneath dark clouds the passing light over the water and I heard the voice of the world speak out. I knew then, as I had before, life is no passing memory of what has been, nor the remaining pages in a great book waiting to be read. It is the opening of eyes being closed. It is the vision of far-off things seen for the silence they hold. It is the heart, after years of secret conversing, speaking out loud in the clear air. It is Moses in the desert, fallen to his knees before the lit bush. It is the man throwing away his shoes, as if to enter heaven, and finding himself astonished, opened at last, fallen in love with solid ground. I really love that poem. It's pretty amazing. I just a uh, something I wrote to a friend of mine. I uh, I was listening to a Buddhist monk today, who I thought was really, really, really good. He was sharing about the twenty twenty four election and his thoughts on it, and he made some excellent observations. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy from him. <laughs> Basically, you know, as, as he was, ex as he saw it, the con, the con men and women have completely lied to the people and captured them. He sees the chain, what's happened as our karma, 
that we are a people destroying ourselves. And so we have, this is my thought, we've, this is the idiocracy that you see that replaced democracy, which I, I've, it's, um, it's absolutely astonishing, but it's payback. It's payback for our many, the many terrible things we've done to others in the world and that we've done to ourselves. So there's no, there's no avoiding what's happening. It's going to happen. It's going to be bad. I think once we see the full extent of what's playing out, I think we're all going to be astonished that we've let the fox into the hen house and he has gone about to devour <laughs> everything he possibly could. It's a clown car full of clowns. It's amazing. And in a way, I think they're trolling, you know, the, the bureaucracy. But here's the thing. It's meant, our system is meant to work with checks and balances. It's got a lot of holes that have been untested. And, and unused and Trump and his cronies have are finding every hole and they're doing everything they can to use them. I only say speak about politics and I speak about the election because, well, the other thing the monk said is all we can do is focus on developing our virtue, being patient, loving each other, bringing compassion to one another. I don't see eye to eye with him on a lot of the Buddhist points, but I think the gist of it is, uh, pro, you know, was right on. You can't let what's happening outside distract you from your work, <clears throat> distract you from your work. You have to double, triple down and you need to stand and you need to speak up. Something in uh, David White's poem that really resonated with me um, was basically, you know, really captured something in David White's poem that really spoke to me and resonated with me was the line, it is the heart after years of secret conversing, speaking out loud in the clear air. That's exactly why I'm speaking up as well. After years of secret conversing, speaking out loud in the clear air. It happens, um, you know, many, I think, write books um, who've come to a point where they've seen the reality of the work that they're doing materialize or they've really seen fruit and they want to say something. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, nobody does, but, um, I think in a way, you know, we deserve this and there's no doubt the old system is gone, is dying. Neoliberalism is likely dead or on the ropes and it's going to take, a lot of focus, um, refocus on the people to continue forward. And, you know, that's a good thing. And uh, Trump may have used it to to win an election. Um, he may have lied to them. And we, you'll, we will see those lies, I believe, play out. Um, but it's, I think, a positive thing to break up the old order. This is a sh a phase shift. This is a real phase shift. More, you know, it triggered probably, at, you know, from COVID and from COVID on, it was like an acid that just ate away at the foundation of our democracy, which isn't a democracy. It's an oligarchy. It's interesting because there's a lot of parallels, I think, to to our inner psyche. What's in our psyche as above, so below. What's in our psyche is playing out, I think, in the world writ large. Um, and there's a lot of people that are closed off, angry, 
no compassion, no love, retribution, anger. This is, um, these are bad. This is a bad setup. These are very bitter people. And, and now the Democrats are becoming even more embittered as they see what they love about the country torn away. Another point by the monk, which I really resonate with and agree with is we are not two parties or three parties or four parties. We are one people. And they can get carried away with all of the manipulation and hypnotism and hypnotizing that they, that they are doing. But ultimately we are one people and, uh, we need to pull together to get through this. It's almost impossible to fight the money and the billionaires that are claiming our country and carving it up. It seems hopeless on a certain level. How can you fight such money? Especially when they have the levers of power now in their hands firmly and they can get rid of anybody that they don't like. Whether people want to admit it or not, Trump was... Trump did some bad things. He likely sold secrets in those documents. <laughs> they weren't able to get all the way through it, but he likely gave away secrets. He There's a different world order than the old global 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 based world order and Trump and his friends are, you know, they are leading it. This includes Putin, it includes ironically every despot, every They've decided to take a firm iron hand against the world. And ironically, this aligns them more with China than ever. Um, could the world be unified under one government? In our current state of evolution, impossible. It would be an utter disaster to try to unify the world like that. So what do we... I continue to hope that we will come together and remember our love for one another, that the Christians will remember that theirs is a religion of love and grace and that we must give that to each other. The, the evangelical fundamentalism is a cult. It isn't even Christianity. The rapture, the end times, that's all fabricated, all of it. The first generation thought that was there at the end. Every generation has thought it's there. It thought it the thought has thought it's the end. In spite of all that, this is a great time to focus. To focus on your inner work, to focus on developing virtue, to focus on developing patience, to focus on developing compassion for each other and for yourself. And, and another point the, the monk made, very wise guy. I love the, I love this talk. We have to love and show compassion to ourselves first. I, I've said that many times. I've said that recently in these, in my videos and it, it continues to just to be my mantra. You know, you have to forgive and love yourself and from there, the world can change one by one from each individual. I'm under no illusion that we're going to come together and it'll be a kumbaya. It's uh, likely not ever going to be a kumbaya. <laughs> but, um, but I believe America will come together that they'll remember that um, we shouldn't have loyalty to a man. We're a country of laws and we should be loyal to our constitution if we want to remain a nation. There's a scenario, I think, where we could divide up, divide the nation. And maybe once we get sick of bashing each other over the head and taking back what the other has gained and take, you know, erasing the gains of the other, maybe we'll come to our senses and say, this isn't working. I mean, I think it would be detrimental for America. America would totally lose its position in the world and the world would shift as the powers would take advantage of our weakness. Um, this is the same as within, with, you know, our struggles within ourselves. We have so many eyes within us that seek to, to surge and gain power. Well, we will see how it goes there, but um, that's all I wanted to share right now. Adieu.